get a lot of hate for this, but um, color mixing kind of sucks. Okay, okay, okay. Are you like me? Do you find color mixing to be tedious? Was it kind of held over your head as like a requirement to be a good artist? Yeah, that can put a lot of pressure on a new artist. And if you're anything like me, make you forgo color mixing for the better part of your adult life. But things have changed and I'm going to show you how and why. So come along with me for the journey. It's gonna be a good one. Don't stop believing. Can I help you? Kind of killing my vibe here. You know, this is the only way to learn color mixing. I don't know what you're doing over there, but split primary, split primary palette all the way. So here she is, the palette that kind of turned me into a color mixing, I wouldn't say fanatic, but I definitely enjoy it now. So I'm going to show you a little bit of the muted magic that can happen from this palette. And then you're going to be able to use that in the upcoming step-by-step -step tutorial that I've got coming for you. And friends, it's going to be quick and super satisfying, but you're going to be armed with some really interesting color mixes that are going to make the experience that much more enjoyable. All right, let's get into it. Now I am going to spray down this palette. I'm not going to clean the palette, at least not yet. And here we go. I'm gonna use my new swatching stamp set. At the time of recording this, this is not even available yet. You might be watching this here later and maybe it's available. So if it is, the link will be down in the description for you. All right, just gonna grab everything out. The one stamp that I'm most interested in for today's purposes is this one. And this is like my color mixing encouraging stamp. <laughs> All right but I am gonna give you a little looky-loo at everything else this little set has to offer. And we've got our water-resistant ink and our acrylic block and all that kind of good stuff. All right, and as you can see, I've been using these and haven't cleaned them properly. Yeah, so I designed this particular stamp to really encourage unique color mixing. And I do have a whole playlist. You can check it out down below. And I like a lighter impression and also, I'm not gonna make a really kind of perfectly centered, placed swatching page, all right? I'm just gonna kinda have at it. If they're lined up, they're lined up. If they're not, they're not. Not gonna worry about that too much. Let's see, kinda like the idea of like little chain link type of feel, all right? Super fun. And one here. And then we're gonna let this dry for about 20 minutes. You can get at it with water sooner than that, honestly. But I like to be a little safer and go for the full 20 minutes so that you don't have any kind of weird bleeding when you start to apply water to this bad boy. Just one more here. There we go. She's ready. Let's let her dry. Now, my paints friends have the cute vanity names, which I can never remember. <laughs> so you'll often hear me uh, referring to them as my blue, my purple, my pink, peach, olive green, golden green, um, and more of an emerald green here, brown, red, the creamy pink and ivory in the fluorescent yellow. I am going to have um, more information up here on screen soon so you can really get a sense of what I'm mixing to make what color and a reference to the actual vanity names or the cute names or whatever you want to call them that I used. Uh, so here we go. These are just some of my favorite mixes and what I'm going to do is put a dab, that's the blue, and then I'm going to go ahead and put another dab oh what are, there's so many of this ivory all right and then um you don't have to rinse in between but i tend to here and there um and then go ahead and just start blendy blend right you can rinse your brush in between so you can maintain kind of the the blueness here and then the more ivoriness here and get a really good sense at what's happening in the middle 
for your mix, right? Love that. So the other thing you can do is go right next door and mix on your palette that combo and a little bit more of a, like a bolder saturation, more coverage and go right next door and just add a little bumper there. So you can really see what that mix looks like in more, with less water, more mass tone. All right, All right, let's move on. Let's do the peach. And can I just say how much fun this is? It's very freeing. I find it very easy to paint into these circles. Um, I am using this cat's tongue brush, friends. And with its point and with its wider belly, um, it gives me such freedom to easily fill in, not go outside of the lines. Because let's face it, sometimes it feels good to not go outside of the lines, all right? All right, and then I'm going to get my saturated little bump out here so I can really see how this is feeling. Isn't that oof? You're going to hear a lot of exclamations from me because I've seriously been so enjoying um, this little color mixing adventure I'm on with my limited palette here. Now I'm going to get crazy. We're going to put a little bit of that in the middle and this isn't going to be so muted. Okay. We're going to go ahead and really mixy mix that up in the middle. Well, actually it is going to be muted. I thought that the yellow might sing there a little bit more than it did, but we're going to see what it does in the full blown. Oh, I got a little something blue going on there. That's creeping in unexpectedly, but that's okay. All right, we're gonna go ahead and double dip some and get our mass tone option here. Oh yeah, a little more pink. See how I'm not even like mixing on the palette and still getting a look at that? Isn't that lovely? Gorgeous. All right, next up, there's so many. This is like my olivey green. Check out on screen if you wanna know the vanity names. And then, oh, there's so many ways you could go here. I love mixing that with my creamy pink. I swear I call it something different every time I talk about it. And you can see how that looks. And then blendy blend out. Rinse, blend down. And I feel like I want to add a little bit more of the straight up pink right down here. Just to remember and then go ahead and double load. I'm going into the pink first so I don't really muddy up my pink with all my crazy double dipping. And isn't that, look at that. It's, it's definitely super muted, but oh gosh, it's like almost like a, like a caramel with some green moments, green undertones, really, really just just lovely so you might be wondering at this point like this is all fine and cute and dandy christy but do i really need to learn color mixing to actually advance as an artist and this is actually the part where i'm going to get some hate but my belief is no i didn't know how to mix colors properly and intuitively for a very long time well into my professional career so yeah, it's all good. Let's get back to the fun. All right, let's head into, okay, my blue. And then this is one of my favorites. One of my favorites, my brown. My brown's really lovely and warm. And let's get her going. And you're gonna get kind of a, my version, I guess, of a Payne's gray. Some would probably disagree, but that's probably my closest assessment of what that would be. But wait till you see it in mass tone. Ooh, lordy. All right, a little more brown in there than I wanted. Blend. And you see how you can go over these stamped images and you are not getting any bleeding. Just lovely. All right, let's go blue. Let's go brown. Let's go mass tone. This is what I use instead of black always. Unless, you know, I mean, there's moments where I will use black and enjoy it, but I usually defer to kind of a rich, muddy, less water mix like that instead of a black. And it does lovely. So we're going into our fluorescent here, mixing a little bit of this ivory-ish color. 
and then we're gonna go into the emeraldy green and we are just gonna have a party and believe it or not it's a muted mix look at that it's definitely more muted than I think you would have thought given that I added a fluorescent in there but it has this hard to put a finger on it zing all right do you see what I'm saying you see what I'm saying hard to put a finger on it zing all right and here's the mass tone I think I got too much fluorescent compared to what I did earlier but look at that in mass tone but when you let's put a little bit more of the ivory on it when it's washed down look Woo! so it's muted a zingy muted mossy green yes okay what's next what's next a little bit of my pink I d I know I'm doing more than two colors here for some of these that's by design my blue and then we're gonna get into the ivory this ivory is kind of my, one of my magic magic makers it just adds a creaminess to everything look at that look at that I'm gonna add a little more pink up here you can really see rinsing double rinsing in my my painter's pot here you got two cups that works too beautifully look at that look look at that oh, yes. and you can also do some lifting in the middle you could come in from the side and do a little bit of lifting just to see what it would reveal if you were to apply that technique and that is useful information that is useful information when you're swatching i'm going to do some here clean water and just lift it out blot it on a paper towel all right let's take a look at that oh i'm gonna have to clean my ivory i just muddied it up real good let's look at the mass tone version of that like a little more pink it's going to be accurate to what i did here look at it. it's like a wisteria like a muted wisteria oh what do i got up my sleeve um we're gonna go brown there's so much that this brown can do. We're gonna go this pinky fuchsia, and you guessed it, a little bit of that ivory. We're gonna see what happens. This is one I haven't done in a while, or maybe I have, I don't know. Oh yeah, so this is like a, a mauve -y kind of moment, but like updated. It's got a slight, um, almost feels like it's got a little orange in the mix, like a salmon-y kind of situation happening. Look at that. Let's go ahead and lift some of that. I hope, friends, that you feel you could find some lovely moments of mixes here, even if you are like me now, how I was before, where I just, I just didn't have it in me. I just had no interest in color mixing, and I amassed, that's why I amassed such a big collection. I still love my collection, but isn't it fun to, to discover or rediscover or change your mind about how you feel about a certain technique or approach, right? And I feel that's like right where I am. So if you feel like you might have that moment, maybe you're curious now about color mixing, I'd love to hear from me in the comments. Just say color and I'll know what you mean. And if you have any questions, I will do my best to answer. And uh, of course, folks in this community are super smart. So I know they'll be able to chime in as well. All right, the creamy pink, the purple, which my purple has like this creamy undertone already just straight from the pan. And then I know that emeraldy green, just a little bit. Let's pull down the pink first, pull up the purple. I wanna add a little more pink because that purple is really strong and takes it over really easily and a little bit more of the green. This is interesting. This is super interesting. Oh yeah. So what you're getting here is a muted, like a teal. All right, let's lift a little. Boom shakalaka. Sometimes too, letting the paint dry a little bit more before you lift can actually create even more like magical moments of like color mingling as you lift that that pigment combo away from the page. All right, let's go ahead and do the mass tone mix. See what that looks like. I'm gonna need a little more green in that to be accurate. 
to what we have here. Now we're gonna be painting soon. It's a really lovely kind of leafy botanical abstract. Um, I put it out in a short uh, on YouTube and I think a reel on Instagram and people were like, I need a tutorial. And I'm like, okay, I'm here for you. So a little more pink in that. Mm. Think about these mass tone where you're, um, these mass tone moments, less water, it's more pigment. It's like a syrupy consistency. Not quite, but I think you know what I mean. It's a great way to describe it compared to these really sheer washes. These are great for adding linear details to like veins, to leaves and stamens and different things like that and texture in your landscapes. And, and it's a way that sometimes I think it's easy to forget about in watercolor that we have this at our disposal. All right, the red. Now I know we're doing muted and you're like, oh Lord, that is not muted. So we're gonna go red and green. And then we're gonna spice it up with the fluorescent and see what happens. So pull up the green, pull down the red, <laughs> oh yeah, so interesting. Pull down a little more red, just a skosh. Pull up a little more green. All right, this, and I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna add the ivory just to tone it down even more. And what you have is a warmer version of my ivory straight from the pan, um, like a pinky version, but still not that, that shell pink, nope. This is so interesting. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna lift. Uh, I've mentioned in some lives recently, check out Traces of Water on Instagram. Here's her information popping up here and uh, see what she's doing with the Art for Joy's Sake palette and you know other palettes, muted mixes. This isn't something that is just exclusive to my palette, uh, but I did design it for some really cool mixes but you can pull out whatever you have and play around with similar color combinations and see what comes of it and, and see how it's feeling for you. Um, you can really surprise yourself, really. Look at that. There we have it. There we have it. So what a lot of folks say that you should use to begin your journey with color mixing is a traditional split primary mixing palette very similar to the one that my alter ego showed you earlier on. But I find that the split primary, while it does mix some really cool bold colors, there's just a little something missing. You're missing that kind of opacity that a white might bring you and the pastels that you could make from that white. You're also missing a really cool bright pink, like an opera pink. And I know, I know, it's not like fast, it's fugitive, it might fade another day. But those are the types of additions with mixing colors that really make things fun and exciting, especially for beginner artists. Whereas this kind of palette, you've got your cool yellow, your warm yellow, your cool red, your warm red, and so on with blue. And then like Blocks is actually trying to get their game on. They've included a couple like browns. With this kind of palette, things can start to feel a little ho-hum, a little traditional. And what I found is beginners need excitement. Beginners need encouragement. And I don't think that the traditional split primary gives that kind of excitement or encouragement as often as it might with some additions. So if you are interested in color mixing, you really feel like even though it may not be your thing that you need to learn it, Get yourself that split primary palette, but add some zhuzh to it. Add some fun pinks, add some opaque colors, right? All right, let's get to painting. All right, let's put all of these gorgeous mixes to use. Today we're gonna paint a really kind of obviously botanical but abstract piece. So low pressure, low stress, lots of joy. Couple of tips here. You're gonna build on what you learned from your color mixing before. You're also going to wanna use what's already on your palette. Now here I had a little bit of a brown mixed with a lot of water from before. I'm adding some ivory. I feel like I want to add some blue even and see what I can get from this. Now remember you don't have to thoroughly mix everything on the palette. That's not the name of the game. Curved edge side of the brush down, press and lift quickly. Go right underneath and wiggle 
wiggle down to a point. Repeat that on the other side without reloading your brush. You might need a little extra water. And then halfway through, add some peach. There is your first leaf. Dabbing it a little pink now. This is considered wet on wet because the page was wet to start. Now you don't need to rinse, but you can add some of that creamy pink to the mix already on there. Press, drag, and lift on a curve. And then the very tip of the brush, very little pressure, just stroke up and out to have two intersecting stems. Now I've got a green up here from before, didn't rinse my brush, press, drag, lift on a curve. Do that a few times over and then a few thin lines. Let those thin lines carry down and then press, drag, and lift. And you can kind of see how I'm building the composition. Got that one central big leaf with the peach, olive, and pink, and then building out from it. Here I'm doing a little bit of press and lift, press and lift, press and lift, and then connecting those three tiny skinny leaves with a few thin, thin vines. Now rinsing my brush, dabbing it on a paper towel, and I'm lifting a little bit on that central leaf just to see what happens. Mixing a little ivory, a little fluorescent, woo, and then a little bit of pink in there. And look at that color, so interesting. A little bit of my olive green, and that's right, not rinsing my brush in between. Now a pressed, curved edge down with a press, curve, drag, and lift. You're gonna do that a second and then a tiny third time. The third time will go in the middle of the first two and then just add a few press and lift, press and lift, and then always carry your strokes back a little bit to that intersection where all of your elements so far are intersecting one another. I'm going in with a little bit more intensity straight from the palette, that golden green there on the top row all the way to the right. Look at how I'm letting the brush dance back towards that intersection on the right hand side here. Now I mixed a little bit of brown into that golden green on my palette and I'm adding it again into the wetness on the page, those beautiful kind of creamy bright yellow leaves that I added initially, pink. Now I did go ahead and rinse my brush before this. I am making a downward facing flower in the bottom left corner here. Really important to rinse your brush on this one. And then just a little bit of pink that bright fuchsia and a little bit of red on the very tip of your brush, stroking downwards through the wet pink and then create a few dots on the bottom of those downward strokes. Now I'm grabbing that olive green from my palette, use your favorite green, but it's pretty intense and stroke upwards towards that intersection to connect everything. And again, look at, I'm back at the intersection where everything's emanating from there on the right hand side. And I'm just adding some of that olive green that started on the left hand side to bring everything together. Take a look at the finished piece dry. This is super breezy, easy, effortless. It's all about that convergence of stems on the right hand side. Now, if you're not convinced about color mixing yet, I want you to watch this playlist and I think you might change your mind. Happy painting.